Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today I wanted to show you how I run L4 missions in EVE Online. I run L4 missions in a rattlesnake. And the fit I use is a cruise missile launcher fit because you've got crazy range with this. So you'll never really have an issue with uh, having to get close to the enemy. You're always going to be in range. And then I use heavy drones and have a few sentries in case because it makes it easy to just snipe enemies at a distance. Uh, I use the full lows with the full damage mods, which gives me insane DPS, 1.4k DPS, which is really nice. And I got an extra large shield booster, and as you can see, I'm not cap stable. I am cap stable if I turn off the shield booster, which is good, because then I can MWD wherever I want to. But um, the reason is not I did not bother making cap stable is because I have more DPS, and, and I never need to continuously use my shield booster in L4 missions. Usually you just have to sustain DP, uh, enemy DPS for a small amounts of time. So I never, is, and even then my shield boost amount is really high. So it's just, uh, it's still still quite overkill. Then I have the target painter and webifier for some application. And then, and then a drone link augmenter for extra drone range. A full capacitor uh, mods here, just to be able to use my micro warp drive and the shield booster at a reasonable amount of time. How I uh, run L4 missions is that I have two ships. So the, the Rattlesnake is the primary mission ship. Then I also have this speedy uh, malediction, which is used to run a certain mission called Recon 1, where you just have to burn to a certain location and then just walk back. So since it's so fast, I'll complete the mission a lot quicker. And then I also use it to travel back from Jita and Langisi. I run missions in Langisi, which is a really good missioning system since if you're in a 0 0.5 system, then you get extra payout compared to like a 0 0.6, 0 0.7, etc. The lower the security status, the more LP and money you get. So this is very fast in terms of traveling, so I'm able to tra travel between Jita and Langisi very quickly. And um, how I run missions is that I run it from this person here, the only L4 agent in uh, Langisi st uh, station in the Sisters of Eve bureau. I run it then f the missions for Sisters of Eve because Sisters of Eve have good um, LP to ISK ratios. You can turn in LP with the loyalty points shop into items and then you can sell these on the market. And these have good, uh, because different corporations you do missions for, some will have a crap uh, LP to ISK ratio. But Sister of, Sisters of Eve has uh, lots of items in their LP store that have a high demand. So they usually have a very good ratio of LP to ISK. So why, uh, uh, these are the missions right here that I uh, usually run. I sometimes run other ones, but these are the most of the ones I run because um, the, this list was made by Hateless Gaming. And the, these are... Uh, uh, very like profitable missions missions you can do complete them very fast and you get a pretty high payout and he actually just happens to be in the system right here this is his alt um, but these uh, I usually uh, look for these uh, missions and if I don't get the mission from the agent then I just decline them and get a new one so let's see if we get one here ah uh, this is not a good one mm, I don't think this one is here no and I'll lose a bit of standing, but it's all right. We gain him back very quickly. I don't run burners because I'm not really I have enough experience in that. I just run standard missions. You earn about oh, this is a this is the best mission you can run, by the way. But I earn a, doing these, I earn about sixty million an hour. It could be sometimes more, but on average sixty million an hour. So it's not that good, but it's very safe, very chill activity. Very you can and you can pause, unlike and warp off unlike abyssal dead space which is a good um isk making method that i do when i want to get a bit of variation so um dread pirate scarlet is a really good one one of the top tier missions right here so you can uh, start running it right now actually oh i didn't and then this is i believe this is even in the current system i think it was we just undock Most of the ISK you get is from uh, LP uh, from missions. I mean, you get, uh, but then you also get quite a bit of bounties. So, I mean, it depends, but most of the ISK usually I find to be from the LP. And then you see a bit of a Leshak here. That's, he's probably also running missions. Quite a beefy ship, but I don't think the Leshak would be that good in missions because it's entropic disintegrator has to spool up and in missions you're usually up against multiple enemies so 
if you have to spool up, spend a lot of time switching targets, it's going to be quite low DPS. I usually can uh, have EM and kinetic drones because EM is good against blood raiders, sanchas, and also rogue drones. Kinetic is good against garistas and uh, uh, what was that? Serpentis. The only one uh, it's it's it, and kinetic is also slightly good against angel cartel ships, but the explosive will be better. But I don't have enough space for that. But kinetic and EM, if you just have those two, you get a good coverage of the different pirate sh ships that exist. You can fight against. Two jumps out. There are certain missions that you can run which are involve you attacking uh, Amar ships, and uh, or in this case for Sisters of Eve, I believe if you're in, or doing missions for a different corporation, you'll be against like for example Kalari ships or uh, Galenta ships. But in, when you're doing missions for Sisters of Eve, you can sometimes get missions. Uh, against Amar ships and one of them is called Pot and Kettle and the thing with that mission is that you get very good isk because you can they drop these tags that you can sell, sell for many million so like one mission can give you about like 50 or 60 million but the problem is my Amar standings will go down hard when I do those missions because you're killing Amar ships and you don't want that to happen because if it happens too much as uh, if you go into Amar space then uh, the, the Amar uh, military will just come and uh, attack you I don't want that to happen Let's warp to location. Dread Pirate Scarlet is a very easy mission because you just have to kill this one person, Dread Pirate Scarlet. It's just, just uh, it's just this uh, wanted pirate. It's quite good because you get a lot of um, you get a lot of LP and isk from the mission, and also Dread Pirate Scarlet has uh, a, a, a quite a high bounty as well. Rattlesnake looks so cool. I really like his etheric raider skin. Looks so sweet. Has this triangle pattern I really like. Incoming message. Okay. And we've already got a gate key. And this is used to go through this gate. You don't usually have to. Usually, they'll spawn some enemy ships now, soon. These are. Good guys. But soon they'll spawn in enemy ships and if I didn't have the gate key I'd have to kill them all. But because I've got the gate key I can just jump in. So I mean the rattlesnake is pretty slow, that's the bad thing about it. But it does crazy DPS and has a really good tank. So it, it can take on pretty much anything missions can throw at it. At least for a certain amount of time until your capacitor runs out. You see all these guys over here? The scrubs just shooting me. Well, we're just gonna peace out. Property boop boop. Yeah, you can shoot all you want. Hey, look, even without me using my booster, they're hardly doing any damage. Okay, let's go. Morping. One thing you have to be careful about is that you don't want to have too expensive stuff. Like here, I've got a C type extra large shield booster, and it's worth about 100 million. But some people go with like really blingy stuff like a, a Gist X-Type large shield boost and that is worth I believe like 500 or 700 million. And so you're gonna inevitably get ganked if you're gonna run really expensive stuff like that. So I don't like to run, and you don't even need to have expensive stuff even. You're still gonna run it just fine. Okay, so then you got a, a Scarlet here. You just have to just shoot one volley of my cruise missiles. There we go, and she's gone. A way to actually run this is that you can have an artillery Macarial, and they can actually kill her before she jumps through this uh, gate. Because the thing is, now I just launched my missiles, and then she just jumped straight away. But if I had an artillery Macarial, it would actually one shot her before she's able to go away, and then, and then, um, uh, then I would complete the mission even faster. Just turn the volume a bit down. So I'm traveling in a straight direction so that straight away I can just go through the acceleration gate. Yeah, peace out. Alright. I mean, Minmata space. I don't really like this dark brown background. I prefer Amar and Kaldari space. I like those backgrounds. They look, I think they look a lot better with the light brown and, or grey. 
Let's lock up. And then she's gone. So then this is the final pocket, I believe. Yeah, and we do not want to keep our shield boost active because you see our capacitor. If I've got the capacitor and micro warp drive, I mean the shield booster and micro warp drive active simultaneously, my capacitor yeah, gets annihilated. Pith Conquistador. Hmm. Yeah, there's no problem for me. Okay, I believe this is the final room, or it could be second final. Yep, it's the final one. Okay, so what you want to do here is you want to kill Ania, and she can sometimes drop an implant. So we're going to put a mobile attractor unit here. This implant can be worth a lot. And always save the location of your MTU in case you forget to scoop it back up. And then this is a case where you send trees, because then you just got this. You don't. Your drones take a long time to travel. Cruise missiles. I'm not going to die almost straight away. Blappity blap blap. Boom. Dead. And she didn't drop anything, so we can just scoop it up straight away. Set the destination. And set our destination back home. I shouldn't have actually activated my micro warp drive there. I mean, if you, you activate a prop mode, then when it turns off, you'll have a higher velocity and be able to warp quicker. But the cycle of this 10 seconds in my line time is, I think, 7 seconds. So it's not it's actually a waste. It's pretty cool how that ship was actually um, a Tech 2 uh, battle cruiser. Uh, I really like that ship, actually. Well, actually, I mean, it's not that great, but it's just I find it inter interesting that they would use that kind of ship in as an NPC because I have not seen them in any other place. What was it now? Need a command ship. Just jump here. Yeah, the absolution. That's what she was flying. It looks pretty good, but I think the shape is a bit off, off in the front and middle section. I can soon fly this. Yeah, the Rattles Egg is really nice for its DPS. You just chug through things so quickly. The main bad thing is this. It's just really slow boy. It's fat. He's a fat boy. Got some orcas mining here. I mean, yeah, the, this is um, if you were to get lucky and do missions like this a lot, then um, like I mean, lucky as in you get a good mission like I just did now, you could go down way more than 16 million an hour, but you usually don't. How I uh, am able to decline missions like I did was that um, I do storyline missions for, for when I unlocked L4 Sisters of Eve missions. I do storyline missions, and when you do storyline missions, you get storyline missions every 16 missions you do. You increase the standings for Servant Sisters of Eve, and this makes it so that when you decline the missions, then you take a sta you also take a standing hit on Servant Sisters of Eve, as, which is the alliance that Sisters of Eve Corporation is in, as well as the regular Sisters of Eve Corporation. But the thing is. Even if your uh, corporation standing for Sisters of Eve is below 5, which you need for L4 missions, uh, as long as your seven Sisters of Eve is h higher than 5, you can still do missions. And when you decline a mission, the standing hit is a lot less for the seven Sisters of Eve as uh, Sisters of Eve, as you can see here. So that's why it's important to do storyline missions so that you can increase the seven Sisters of Eve missions. Then you can be more picky with what missions you take, like I do now. You still don't want to just continuously decline them because you can you can eventually get uh, uh, Sisters of Eve, the standard corporation, standing below, I think it's like minus two, or you at least it becomes very little, so then even if you've got a higher servant Sisters of Eve standing, it won't matter, you won't be able to do missions. Okay, there we go. Bloop. We've got three million, eight million from that, so that's uh, because, uh, uh, well, more like nine million. I would say that one loyalty point is worth about 1,100 uh, isk. 
on average it can be worth more if you're smart with how you trade it in this store here so that was how i run missions guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you later